everybody. I'm back uh, here for another section, Art, art Fundamentals. Um, and we're going to get started on our overview of Western art. Um, but before we do that, we need to kind of talk about some of the reasons we are studying the particular art that we are. Okay. Um, so um, most of the early art, uh, most of the early art we are, we are exploring are from uh, enduring materials, right? We don't necessarily have access to non-durable materials, right? And some of those enduring materials uh, include things like uh, stone, uh, metal, and fired clay, right? So pottery is what fired clay would be, right? Um, on top of that, and so or so to to kind of contrast this with the non-enduring materials, right? Uh, especially things like woven textiles, right? Um, uh, fibers, right? Uh, wood and fibers, right? Are not very enduring, so we don't really have a whole lot of access to um, uh, art with made from those materials, right? Another major um, uh, thing, another major factor about what um, art we do have available to us is the environmental conditions, right? So especially uh, hot, dry climates um, are have have a lot of art available because those are better for preserving uh, uh, goods, right? And so one of the examples they bring up is ancient Egypt, right? We have lots of examples from ancient Egypt, right? Right. They talk about things like uh, papyrus, right? Uh, they talk about papyrus. Um, and they talk about the uh, uh, caves and tombs, right, which are available to us from Egypt, right, um, help preserve these objects. Whereas the the humid climate, right, the humid climate of West Africa, right, made it much more difficult to um, preserve materials and goods and objects from the West African society, right, especially um, if they were made per made out of perishable materials, right? Okay. Um, and so this is one of the main reasons we actually see that emphasis on Western art in, in art history, right? Um, right? We see an emphasis on Western cultures in art history, um, not because um, we, not because it is better or more prolific. It is simply because a lot of times it's just what's available at this time. Um, uh, Right, it's it's preserved art more than anything that really focuses us on Western culture art, right? Um, uh, and in specific examples, right, they talk about Central and South America, right, having um, uh, not necessarily having um, the the um, the preserved goods, but also a lot of those areas are unexplored, right, um, or uh, exploited or destroyed by, well, the Westerners, right? Which means we no longer have access to it, right? Um, so um, that's kind of the reason we focus on Western art, right, for the most part, okay? Um, and so now let's get into uh, art of the old Stone Age, okay? Um, so topic 1.1, 1 .1, uh, art of the old Stone Age. All right. So um, the first one that we have to know about is, of course, the Chauvet cave paintings uh, in France. Okay, um, in southeastern France in particular. All right. So these were discovered in. I believe I'm using red for dates. Uh, it was discovered in 1994. Okay, um, and it dates from about 30,000 BCE, okay? Um, so about 32,000 years ago, right? And so we place this in what's called the Old Stone Age, the Upper Paleolithic Era. Okay, um, or the Upper Paleolithic Period, right? Um, so these are estimated dates, right? And so um, the, the two main colors um, the Chauvet Caves are a red ochre, or ochre, uh, and uh, a black charcoal, with a hint of yellow, right, with a, with a minimal use of yellow. Um, let's actually take a look 
at that now. Um, hopefully I'll be able to do this for most of these, right? So these are the Chauvet cave paintings, right? Uh, this one in particular clearly has a lot of charcoal, right? We can't necessarily see the ochre, right? But we might even actually be able to see a little bit of that yellow um, throughout this, this art, right? So that's the one part of the Chauvet cave paintings, okay? Um, and talk about the different animals in use or are, 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 uh, outlined here in this art, which is horses, uh, rhinos, which is, these are kind of crazy to think about considering this is in France, uh, lions, buffaloes, and mammoths. All right, kind of showing you the, the uh, natural makeup of, of the region of southeastern France, right? Um, the other two places we have seen, uh, the two other major cave places in France and Spain are uh, Lascaux, uh, which is located in France, and Altamira, uh, which is located in Spain. Okay, um, so um, these are larger kind of animal drawings, right? but they're still also animal drawings. Um, which here is a lot of the same stuff. We got horses, but we also have bears this time. Uh, we have lions again, uh, but we also have bison. Okay. Um, and then we again have mammoths, right? But the kind of key difference between the Lascaux paintings and the uh, Altamira paintings and the Chauvet cave paintings are um, drawings, outlines of human hands. Okay, um, and so they, you know, they talk about how originally they were like, oh, this is clearly very spontaneous, right? Um, but over time, it's very clear that these are skilled artists with some sort of tradition of drawing, uh, either within their community or within their particular lineage, right? Um, and, and it's the same colors um, uh, with a kind of a, a, a slight change. They talk about red and yellow ochre, and they did not say ochre uh, in this one up here for Chauvet. Um, but it's probably good to assume that it is. Uh, I think it's okay to assume, I should say. Uh, and of course, black charcoal again, all right? Um, and so the original function is possibly uh, to be um, hunting ceremonies. Or other ritual behaviors. Right? Other rituals possible, all right? Um, although we're not entirely sure. Okay, and here is uh, the hand paintings. I believe this one is from Altamira, right? Um, actually, no, I take that back. This is Lesko. Uh, so you can kind of see the outlines of the hand here, right? Which is super cool to see. Okay. Um, the other famous old, uh, uh, old Stone Age artwork um, is uh, small stone figurines. Um, with the best known of these being the Venus of Willendorf. Uh, did we get a date on Lascaux and Altamira? I do not believe we did. No, I did not see one. Okay. So the Venus of Willendorf um, is from around uh, 28,000 to 25,000 BCE, somewhere in that range. I don't know if that's saying this particular object or... Um, all of the objects of this type, right? So what are these, right? Well, these are uh, small stone figurines. They're very small. Small stone figures. Uh, and in fact, they are um, uh, four and one eighth inches high. So uh, four and one eighth inches, right? Um, okay, so that is the uh, that is the size of it. So very, very small again. Um, they have uh, exaggerated bellies. They have exaggerated breasts. Uh, they have exaggerated pubic areas as well. Okay. Um, and let's see here. Um, and so uh, at the same time, though, the facial features are quite undefined. Right. Um, uh, the arms barely visible. Okay, uh, and there are no feet, right? Um, and so the the kind of general scholarship then on this on these on these figures is that these are fertility figures, right? With the accentuation of the kind of uh, fertility parts of the of the figurine, right? 
um, and the uh, kind of invisibility of the others. And uh, let's take a look at that if we can. Uh, here you can see uh, the famed Venus of Willendorf. Okay. Um, so yeah, all right. Um, let's move on to our uh, second topic here. Uh, the art of the Middle Stone Age. Okay, um, and so this is also known as the Mesolithic period. Okay, so we got the Paleolithic, we have the Mesolithic, uh, and then we will eventually get to the Neolithic. Okay, um, so during this era, we see warmer temperatures. And because we see warmer temperatures, what we see is a move out of caves, right, for humans, right? Um, and we see um, um, them move into rock shelters. So kind of more open air, right? A little more um, circulation of air uh, into these rock shelters. Um, and then um, we've seen um, the, and the, the reason we know this, right, is our, uh, we see, uh, sorry, we see paintings um, on rocks in Eastern Spain it's kind of one of our main pieces of evidence of this, right? Um, and they are generally estimated uh, to be from around uh, 7,000 to 4,000 BCE, okay? Um, the, uh, so, and, and, you know, if you actually know the time period of this all, right, 4,000 BCE um, is actually kind of quickly approaching the end of the, the, the beginning of the major societies in places like Mesopotamia, right? So it's, a, it's an interesting kind of time period right there, right? Um, and so just like um, we had, just like the rock cave paintings, we have um, animal figures, right? Um, but what's different about the rock shelter paintings as opposed to the cave paintings is the portrayal of humans, right? The depiction of humans. Okay, the depiction of humans. Um, and we didn't have any, um, there was only one at Lasco, right? There's one human portrayed at Lasco, uh, but other than that, there were there were none, right? Um, we do see humans here, both in alone and in groups, right? Um, and there are scenes with humans dominating animals, right? It's kind of the, the main uh, topic of these paintings. And let's take a look at one of those now, if we can. Okay. So you can see here, um, you see human figures in the front. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say this one's dominating per se, but it looks like they're actually worshiping. Uh, but they also could be, you know, trapping uh, what looks like a rabbit um, and maybe some sort of goat or ram. Oh, that is a big goat or ram in comparison to that bunny. But bunnies can be tiny. Okay. All right, our third topic in this one. Art of the New Stone Age. Okay, um, so the New Stone Age called the Neolithic period, which is also when we see the advent of agriculture. Um, but the 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 most the, the the artwork typically associated with the New Stone Age are the the rings slash rows of of rough hewn stones. Rough hewn, I believe, means something along the lines of they are um, somewhat somewhat sanded down, right? Somewhat like shaped, but not too much, right? And we can date these back to as early as 4,000 BCE, okay, which is right in line with the end of the Mesolithic over here, right? Um, these stones were quite large, okay? They could be um, 17 feet in height, Uh, and then also we could see them be um, quite possibly um, 50 tons. Okay, so they're very large. Um, and so we, they, the reason for, or for this, they are called megaliths, right? Which are kind of just monstrous stones, right? Massive stones, right? And a lot of cultures that are, that you, that create these are called megalithic, right? Um, 
And the most the the one everybody knows about, of course, is going to be Stonehenge. Right, Stonehenge is located in um, Salisbury Plain in Wiltshire, England. Okay, so that is the probably the most well known. Almost uh, not even probably, it is undoubtedly the most well known. Um, it is believed to have been built in several phases, starting around or ending around uh, 2100 BCE. Um, uh, and so it has concentric rings. Um, and the uh, two types of, of um, stones are sarsen, which is a form of sandstone, uh, and the more local bluestone, which is a little bit smaller, right? Um, so the outermost ring, um, so the outer ring is composed of, um, let's see here. Uh, the outermost ring is, uh, is the sarsen stones and what are called post and lintel construction. Post and lintel construction, um, which is, is pretty simple. It is that, right? That is post and lintel construction, right? Um, with the uh, top part being known as a cross piece or also a lintel, right? With these being posts, right? Uh, and then there's a smaller ring underneath or, or uh, below that. Um, and then we have a, a, a composed of blue stones uh, is the next kind of ring. Um, and then those uh, encircle uh, another ring. Uh, not a ring per se, a, a horseshoe shaped row, a horseshoe shaped row. Um, and that horseshoe shaped row has five uh, post and lintel sar uh, uh, sarsens, right? Lintel topped as they call them, uh, lintel topped sarsen stones. Oops. Okay. Um, and these are the largest ones uh, at Stonehenge, right? So this inner kind of ring, uh, up weighing up to 50 tons. Um, and then outside the formation uh, to the Northeast, uh, we have what is called, um, we have what is called the heel stone, a vertically placed heel stone. Okay. Um, and if you uh, stand in the center of the rings and look outward, um, this will um, this will signal the uh, midsummer solstice. Oops. Okay, um, so um, that's uh, going to do it. Um, but what we're going to start to see is um, from this point forward, um, we're going to see civilizations as opposed to just kind of these outposts of different little little societies. Right, um, and so what we usually see here um, um, is that um, kind of one of the key components of a society, uh, in a, of a civilization, um, is that we see art thrive in them. Right, we see art thrive in organized cultures. Okay, um, and uh, not only uh, organized but also stable populations. Right, because when stability occurs, people will tend to look for ways to express. Um, themselves a little bit more, but if it's unstable, you're going to see more concern about, you know, survival, right? Um, and especially they're talking about uh, kind of massive cities as well, so where we'll see a lot of this art occur, right? And on top of this, we will see rulers. Uh, rulers will use art to support the rule. Okay, um, art is a is historically is a common form of propaganda, right? For a for a um, government, right? Okay, um, and then on top of all this, right, um, um, if a civilization has a, uh, has a tradition of protecting its art, right, if civilization have a, has a tradition of protecting its art um, and, it is, and it puts it in inaccessible uh, locations, Right, we will be more likely to be able to study it today, right? Um, um, so then, it is more likely that the art survived. Okay.
Okay. Um, and so um, they talked about some artifacts like chambers, caves, and tombs, right? Which again, really points us into the direction of the Egyptians, but we will get to the Egyptians uh, a little bit later. Um, but also real quick, I forgot to look at uh, Stonehenge, right? So you can kind of see this, this outward circle of post and lentil sarzens, and then you kind of see these little blue stones. It's hard to see from here. Uh, and then this inside um, sarzen stones. Um, and I cannot, I cannot tell where the heel stone is. I think this might be the heel stone, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, that is Stonehenge, and that is going to do it for the pre-civilization arts, the the art of the old, middle, and new Stone Ages. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and one thing I do want to point out is that some people might be reading this or listening to this and notice that this is very detailed. And not only as a coach, but as a former decathlete, this is the amount of detail I would say is necessary, right, to... Um, to really succeed in decathlon, right? It's and, and it's not because they're going to ask you all these questions, right? But it's the concept of overlearning, right? You want to overlearn the the material if you want to be as good as you possibly can, right? You want to learn the material to the point where that no question they ask you is a surprise, right? No, not as and, and not to say you're going to get every question right, but you're but the questions that they ask you're going to be so comfortable with for the most part that they're going to be no problem leading to you maybe having you know five to ten questions that you actually have to really question and and think about as opposed to having you know half the test to be something that you're curious that you don't really know about right so the concept of overlearning i think is very important and i think a lot of students don't understand it not just for decathlon but for all classes if you you need to learn every little detail in and out not because they're going to ask it but because they can ask anything a and b if you overlearn it then the things that they are going to ask are, are going to typically turn out to be pretty simple okay all right so that's going to do it for today thank you guys so much and i'll see you in the next one.